The village we now call Summerfield was first settled by the Harmon Crumb family when they established a farm here in 1839. The area was still inhabited by Seminole Indians and Mr. Crumb's family learned the dialect and they had friendly relations with the tribe. Eventually, more settlers came and a meeting house was built about 1850. That building was about two miles west of the current village of Summerfield. The meeting house area was named for Harmon Crumb, but property records don't show he ever owned the land. The Crumb family owned all the land surrounding the property. The church was dedicated as a Baptist church and as was the custom at the time a cemetery was established on the church grounds. The building was built to also be used as a school. The pews were split logs. Everyone in the area attended the church including slaves who sat together in a partitioned off section of the building. The men carried their firearms to church and there were holes in the wall to fire through, if necessary. Apparently, the firearms were never needed. The Seminoles were not the native population of Florida. They too came to the area from elsewhere. As a result of the Seminole War most of them moved farther south. Harmon and Rhonda Crum are both buried at Crum Cemetery. The Crum Church burned in the 1890s. However, the churchyard became Crum Cemetery. A cemetery association was established to maintain and operate the cemetery. The 10-acre Crumb Cemetery had numerous owners until 1918 when it was deeded to the Crumb Cemetery Association. The Crumb Cemetery Association is still in operation. By 1853 there was a large immigration of new settlers from the Carolinas and Georgia. Two of these new settlers brought slaves with them. By 1854 a school was established in the Crumb Meeting House. Peter Perry was the teacher. Mr. Perry was a South Carolinian who had been recognized by the U.S. Congress for bravery in the Mexican-American War. Peter Perry eventually established the village of Pedro about three miles west of the Crumb Cemetery at the junction of what is now West County Highway 42 and South County Highway 475. Pedro is Spanish for Peter. About 1854 Charles H. White opened a general store on what is now U.S. Highway 301 across the highway from the entrance of the current U.S. Post Office. He later established a post office in the store. He named the area Whitesville. Mr. White hauled merchandise from the steamboat port at Silver Springs. The mail came via stagecoach. The stagecoach ran from Ocala to Roach Pond which is present-day Bellevue, Whitesville, Sandspur which is present-day Oxford and Adamsville. In addition to the C.H. White General Store and Post Office, Whitesville had a Methodist church, a cotton gin, a telegraph office, a school, a blacksmith shop, a sawmill, a grist mill, a saloon, a pharmacy, a second general store, a shipping station and several homes. In 1882 the railroad was built south from Waldo. Due to right-of-way problems the railroad built its line east of Whitesville and built a depot about two miles south of Whitesville and labeled it Lake Weir. Thereupon, members of the Whitesville community came together and built a rail depot near the rail crossing at what is now Southeast 147th Street. However, there was a problem, the railroad would not accept the name, Whitesville, for the town name. In order to satisfy the railroad, the village adopted the name, Summerfield, by a vote. The name was adopted to honor Colonel Adam Summer. Colonel Summer was a pioneer in the Florida cattle industry, he introduced the Brahma breed to Florida in addition to developing herding methods. Colonel Summer owned a plantation near Whitesville. The railroad accepted the depot and the new town name. As a result, the center of town shifted east about a quarter mile to what is now the railroad crossing at 147th Street. The coming of the railroad and the depot caused a boon in the town. The Durants, Mitchell, Caraway, S. N. Dillard, J. B. Douglas and F. S. Lucius stores were all opened near the depot. Mr. Dillard also opened a post office and a hotel in 1885. A young doctor moved into town, Dr. W. V. Newsom. Dr. Newsom eventually moved to Ocala and practiced for many years. F. S. Lucius was elected to the Marion County Commission from Summerfield and served many years. The town established a one-room school and appointed C. L. Bittinger as teacher. Mr. Bittinger later moved to Ocala and joined both the newspapers, the Ocala Star and the Ocala Banner. Eventually, the county built a three-room school on the site of the Whitesville Methodist Church. The three-room school served students from grades 1 to 8. This school was expanded and a new building was built in 1923 which served 1st through 12th grade. 
The second school building is located just south of the First Baptist Church at the junction of Southeast 147th Street and Southeast 65th Court. The Summerfield School continued to serve children from 1st through 12th grade until 1954. Summerfield High School had a renowned six-man football team, the Summerfield High School Bulldogs. The Summerfield High School was eventually consolidated with Wearsdale and Bellevue schools to form Lake Weir High School. The new school served 7th through 12th grade and was located in the buildings that now house Lake Weir Middle School. Summerfield School became an elementary school and remained in operation until 1968. Summerfield was a shipping center for local farmers. First for the citrus farmers and later for truck farmers. The citrus industry boomed in the area until 1894 when there were hard freezes, first in December 1894 and then February 1895. The combination of the freezes destroyed most of the local citrus trees. As a result, local agriculture switched to truck farming and cattle. The main crops were watermelons, tomatoes and cattle. Most of the farmland has been developed for housing and commercial projects and the majority of the agriculture industry has ceased operation. Another young man, Nathan Mayo, came to Summerfield and established a very successful business. He dealt in citrus, turpentine processing, cotton ginning and general merchandise. His store became the largest store in the area. Nathan was elected to the county commission and then the legislature. During Mr. Mayo's tenure in the legislature the state commissioner of agriculture position became vacant and Governor Hardy appointed Nathan Mayo to fill the remainder of the commissioner's elected term. Mr. Mayo ran for re-election to office and served as the Florida Commissioner of Agriculture from 1923 until his death in 1960. He is the longest-serving state elected official in Florida history. As Commissioner of Agriculture, he also oversaw the Florida Department of Corrections and the Florida Highway Patrol. Nathan Mayo established the Florida Citrus Commission in 1935 to guarantee quality of Florida citrus products. Mr. Mayo stopped an attempt to drain the Everglades for agricultural development in 1928. During the Great Depression he established farmers' markets around the state to help farmers get their products to market. During his term while overseeing the Department of Corrections he established vocational training for inmates, modernized facilities and established Florida's first prison for women at Lowell. Nathan Mayo married Nora Newsom, Summerfield's first doctor's daughter, in 1899. They bought the C.H. White home and renamed it Mayonia. It remained their home until their deaths, Nora in 1959 and Nathan in 1960. Nathan commuted between Summerfield and Tallahassee while serving as Commissioner of Agriculture. Mayonia is located across Highway 301 from the current U.S. Post Office. By 1906 the influx of new people was from the north. Charles Painter arrived from Chicago and established the Florida National Land Company. He appointed Charles Davis as the local administrator. The company sold land to people in the northern states. The Florida National Land Company built a hotel, the National Colony House and an adjoining general purpose building. When Florida National Land Company ceased operations, they sold the hotel and adjoining building to Mr. and Mrs. Richard Clyburn. Mrs. Clyburn ran the hotel and Mr. Clyburn ran a store in the adjoining building. The Clyburn family eventually closed the hotel and used the hotel building as their family residence. Mr. Clyburn ran his store until 1955. Grace Clyburn McCullough and her husband Harry McCullough bought the property in the mid-1960s and built Harry's Handy Store on the site of her father's store. Harry's Handy Store closed in the early 1990s. The turpentine and lumber industry came to Summerfield in the early 20th century. Colonel West of Valdosta, Georgia, established the Lavon Lumber Mill about three miles west of Summerfield on what is now Southeast 145th Street. This mill won a contract for supplying the lumber used to build the Panama Canal. It became a large operation and a village, Lavon, developed around it. A narrow-gauge rail line was built between Lavon and Summerfield for transport of the lumber to the Summerfield Depot. Then the lumber was shipped from the Summerfield Depot. When the contract expired the mill was closed. Lavon and the buildings surrounding it are gone. The vacant land that resulted from the tree harvesting became farmland and further expanded farming in the area. More churches were established in Summerfield. Two of these early churches are still in operation.
Hansen and Chani Wade with their daughter Elizabeth had a vision to form a church for the African-American families in Summerfield and Mount Olive Baptist Church was established in 1904. The first pastor was Rev. Sam Peoples. Mount Olive became the center of the social life of the African-American community in Summerfield. Their current sanctuary is located on 147th place and the church is still very active. The First Baptist Church was established in 1911 and used the Whitesville Methodist Sanctuary until they completed their sanctuary later in 1911. First Baptist Sanctuary was erected in 1911 on Highway 301 across the highway from Mayonia. The church remained on that property until 1955. The church bought the old three-room school property from the Marion County School Board and the sanctuary building was moved to that property. The total cost of purchase of the land and moving the church building was $5,000. The original 1911 sanctuary is still on that site. The three-room schoolhouse was used for Sunday schoolrooms and a fellowship hall. The high school FFA building built in 1944 next to the original school building was converted for use by the church. The church later acquired more land and built a new sanctuary and family life center. The 1911 sanctuary and the FFA building is now the Spanish ministry of the First Baptist Church. There was a period of about 11 years that there was no Methodist church in Summerfield after the old Whitesville Methodist Church was sold to the school board in 1912. In 1923 Nathan Mayo donated the lot next to Mayonia which was the site of Charles White's store for construction of a Methodist church. The First Methodist Church of Summerfield began holding services in that building in 1924. The First Methodist Church closed in 1947 and the property was deeded back to Mr. Mayo. The building has been used by other churches since. Both the First Baptist and the First Methodist Churches began with circuit-riding preachers. The two churches scheduled their preachers on different Sundays, thus having a sermon every Sunday. The two churches shared a Sunday school program for many years. This cooperation continued until both churches grew large enough to support a full-time pastor. There was a small Roman Catholic church, St. Martin of the Fields, on what is now 145th place. Services were held there from about 1919 until the mid-1920s. David Buick, for whom the Buick Motor Company was named, left the General Motors Corporation and eventually came to Summerfield. He purchased land and began to develop Buick City, northwest of Summerfield off what is now Highway 441. Unfortunately, Mr. Buick's development failed and left Mr. Buick bankrupt. By the 1950s most of the stores around the depot were gone. T.B. Mills married Marie Proctor of Summerfield and settled in Summerfield. He built a store building with a post office attached close to the location of the Nathan Mayo store. He became the postmaster of Summerfield. After Mr. Mills retired, he sold the building to Arthur White. Arthur got the contract to build a post office next door to the Mills store building. Arthur White grew up in Summerfield, but is no relation to Charles H. White, for whom Whitesville was named. Arthur opened an upholstery business in his home and began selling furniture. After he purchased the old store building, he opened White's Furniture. He expanded the original building and his business was very successful. As the business grew White's Furniture moved its store and primary warehouse to U.S. Highway 441. White's Furniture still owns and uses the original building as a warehouse. The old post office building is used for music concerts. Arthur also owns the Harry's Handy Store building across the street from the old White's Furniture store. The area around the site of the Charles H. White store has had a store and variety of businesses over the years. The current store in this area was established by A. M. Nelson in the 1930s as a store and gas station. It was operated by Mr. Nelson, his daughter Louise and her husband Richard Bellamy into the 1970s. The Nelson store introduced supermarket-type shopping, where the customer picked out items themselves to Summerfield. The store has had several owners and names after the Nelson family, but it continues to operate.